we read in the parsha of Vayera. Um, last week, we read about how, at the age of ninety-nine, Abram says to was told by Hashem that he should circumcise himself, not only himself, his household, and he circumcised them all, including himself. At that time. Hashem had added a hate to his name. He was Avram, he became Avraham at the time. Sorai became Soro. There's an interesting Midrash. The Midrash tells us that when Hashem had said to Avram, go outside of your tent and look at the stars in the heaven, but the Torah says he took him outside. So Rashi cites one interpretation, he took him above the stars. And he says, you're not subject to the zodiac. Avram, Elo, Ben, Avraham Yeshlo Ben. Avram will not have a son, but Avraham, with the added hey, you will have a son. When did he become Avraham? When he was circumcised. So again, Rashi cites the Chazal, that the numerical value of Avraham is Ramach. That until he was circumcised, he was not in full control of every part of his body. What part of the body was not in control? His two eyes, his two ears, the Rosh Agdiyo, and his male organ. When he was circumcised, he had total control. He became the total person, the total spiritual person. There was an aspect of his being that he was not in full control of. That's Avraham. And that's, although you're an expert astrologer, you transcend the stars. The Gemara tells us that in Mazel the Israel, the nations of the world are subject to the zodiac. It cannot be changed under any circumstance. A Jew, the Mazel can be changed through enormous tefillah, supplication, tremendous merit. It could be changed. Although the zodiac says one thing, it could be changed. Um, so evidently, if the zodiac says one thing, it, it means with slight alteration. He had to become Avraham, unless you say because he was pre in Yisrael, so therefore he had to have the name change. But what does it mean he transcended? So I was thinking, we find that Paro was an astrologer. And he had seen that the Jews are gonna die in the desert. He says, I'm not sending them out. This there was a star raw. So Moshe Rabbeinu said, Lomi Yom Rubitsroim, after the Chet Egel, watching the Egyptians say that God took them out into the desert to, to kill them. It would be a Chil Hashem, a desecration of God's name. So what did God do? Rather than it should be the blood of bloodshed, it was Dam Milo. Because after 40 years, Yeshua had the Jews circumcised. Because during the 40 year period, they were not circumcised. I mean, once Moshe Rabbeinu went and he supplicated and he invoked Rachmim, so they will not be killed. There will not be bloodshed, regardless of what he saw. So evidently, if it says in the stars they have to be killed, they have to be killed. So what did Hashem do? The blood. Rather than being bloodshed, it was dam milo. There's a blood of circumstance. It had to be blood. It had to remain that. We find that Moshe Rabbeinu, when he gives the bracha to Shevet Levi, says, Rizcha Yon Tzoru. Although in the desert, the Jews did not circumcise themselves, but Shevet Levi did circumcise themselves. But there was a question of actually, the blood didn't clot. Because the northern wind for 40 years did not blow in the desert, the Gemara tells us. So if that's the case, that's why the Jews didn't circumcise themselves because there was a chance of actually bleeding to death. Because the, blood, the clotting factor, which is needed, wasn't there because you have to have that special wind. But Shevet Levi, the tribe of Levi, Brishri and Soru, they kept the bris regardless. Meaning, so what is Mila to a degree? Firstly, naturally, a person is born uncircumcised. Cutting yourself allowing yourself to remove the foreskin. It's the equivalent of actually, you're putting your life 
in jeopardy to a degree. Shevet Levi did put their life in jeopardy. But again, for some reason, Mila is a semblance of bloodshed. Except they brought it upon themselves. Because again, once something stays, is stayed in the zodiac, you, can, it, it's, you can't change it. It's, it's not easily changed. The, st the star that's called Ra says it's not good for the Jews. They will be killed. Bloodshed. They had to be. Avram Avinu transcended it. But had he transcended? As Avram, there was no way to change it. Mm -hmm. It had to become Avraham. Avraham allowed him to transcend the mazel. Now, why does the hay allow him to transcend the mazel? Is because he's a different person, but he's the same person, just a name change. Just by adding, person goes and uh, he has aliases, he changes his name, he becomes a different being. So evidently, when Hashem changed Avram's name, there was a change that the original sign of the zodiac has no application to him. The question is, why not? Before it did, now it no longer has. The major says, Hashem said that the Gemara tells us that Hashem created the world with the spirituality that lay, lies within the letter He. Hashem says, as Avram, you will not have a son. What it takes and what it took to create all existence, which was the spirituality of the He, to bring about that transformation within yourself to be able to father the future patriarch of Klal Yisrael, you have to be new, we, you have to become a new being. What creation came about through the hay to make a difference in you, you will be the equivalent of all creation. You're a new creation. So the hay is not just putting a different label on him. Avram, although in his physical being he was the same person, but in terms of his dimension of being, he was a being that didn't pre-exist that moment. Therefore, the zodiac has no relevance to you. The zodiac has relevance to this existence. You transcend existence. Therefore, as a result of the circumcision, now you and Sarah are able to be the patriarch of matriarch of Klal Yisrael, and Yitzhak's able to be born. So it's interesting. Sari Menu initially had believed that the reason why she couldn't conceive the deficiency lied in herself. That's what she believed. And that's why she initially had given Hogar as a wife to Avram. And she said, I will build through her. I mean, how do you build through her? So Rashi says that through the source of giving my maidservant to my husband, and that merit, I will have a child. What, what's the merit? You know what it means for a woman to share her husband with another woman? I mean, she felt maybe it was lacking humility in herself. And maybe she wasn't worthy of that miracle, right? It still didn't work. Because factually it had nothing to do with her. Because Klal Yisrael is a different dimension of being, there had to be a recreation. That's the reason why she couldn't have the child. Avram was not qualified or capable in his state that he was. He was a human being, he was an ordinary human being, except he was an exceptional ordinary human being. Now he's no longer an ordinary human being. He's not even within the same dimension of that human being. He's a different creation. He becomes Avraham. Now that he becomes Avraham, it's very interesting. The world became putrefied as a result of the Chet of Adam Rishon. Avraham ascended from, God ascended from this existence. Due to Avraham, Avraham brought God back into this existence. Now, we say that the Ovos HaKadoshim the holy patriarchs, hein 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 merkava. What is the location of God's presence in this world where they are? As in the Mishkan, in the Holy of Holies, that was the location of God's presence. Avram was the location of God's presence. Yitzchak was the location of God's presence. Yaakov was. Now why? But this world it doesn't qualify. This world and the others are different worlds. Where Avram is, that's not this existence. That existence is the pre-existence. That's a new creation. The physical world became putrefied. Avram is a different being. He's the Merkava. But when did he become the Merkava? Only after the circumcision. Because that hay, as a result of removing the foreskin, he became a different being. But it's, it's interesting. Because the foreskin, as we mentioned many times, in the name of Orchaim HaKadosh, based on the Zohar, was an expression of the Ra. That was an expression of the evil of the Eitz 
by removing that, that removes us from that chet and gives us a capacity of spirituality which we wouldn't have if that wouldn't be removed. That's the reason why we were given the mitzvah of Milo. That's the bris. That's the covenant. It's interesting. We find, it says in the, in the, in the Parsha, that the covenant is the bris and it's linked to the land of, of Eretz Yisrael. We were given the land of Eretz Yisrael due to the bris. says in last week's reading I will establish this covenant between myself and you and your progeny after you for all the generations an eternal covenant to be your God and your children after you you will have the land you and your children the land of your sojournings so there's a linkage. The bris and Eretz Mugarech, Eretz Kanan. Eretz Kanan is the only location which does not have an archangel. God oversees that. Any other part of existence, God has no relation with that existence. God's relationship is only through the angel, through an archangel. But why this location? It's, and this is the land. So there is a reflective aspect here the Jew himself is a different being. It's not part of that original existence. And that's why he could have that special relation with God. And that's the linkage to the land which has no archangel, which is personally overseen by God himself. And that's only due. And why did Avram have to go to the land of Canaan? For that specific reason. For that reason. Because only there, only there is he able to be effective at his own level to advance to that level. Jew, if he has slaves, canonic slaves, he has to circumcise them. Even the assets of the Jew have to be circumcised, even though it's a different concept. We find that when Avroma Vinu purchased the Mars Machpelo to bury Sari Menu, the cave of Machpelo, it says when he purchased the cave, the fields, and the trees, it says, by Yoko. So Yoko means it, it actually it transferred. Rashi explains, according to one interpretation of the Midrash, by Yochum, it was elevated. It went from the domain of a commoner to the domain of royalty, of a prince. By Yochum, of course, anything that's associated with, with, with a tzaddik assumes another dimension of value. So if Hashem has a bris with Avram Avinu, or with any Jew, the person who could be circumcised becomes part of his domain. The Evid Kanami. You can't have a human being that's, un that's uncircumcised. Because an uncircumcised human being, which is your chattel, is a problem. Because it's a representation of what that's an extension of you. That identifies with you. Therefore, that has to be removed. So, therefore, a person has slaves that are uncircumcised. He's not permitted to bring Korm Pesach. The Korm Pesach was what? Was we terminate our relation with idolatry. We could only there, we reestablish, we reinstated to who we were supposed to be. That was, that was the whole idea of Yitzhi Smitsurim, right? We left Egypt. It was a redemption. This was the precursor to Kabbalah Satora. But again, it was removing ourselves from that level of post-sin to have relevance to the pre-sin. If anything that has any relevance, they have to be circumcised. The Rechaim HaKadosh explains seemingly throughout the Torah, wherever it says, Vayera, it usually says, Vayera Hashem El Avram. God appeared to Avram. In this first postdoc, Vayera Elav Hashem. God to him appeared. Appeared to him God. Did you say God appeared to him? 
What is it saying? By Yira Elov Hashem. So he explains, this is the first time Avram became the Merkava. The Elov, Vayira Elov means he is the location. He is the location for God. If it would say Vayira Hashem Elov, God appeared to him. He appeared to him now. It's like Vayomer Hashem El Avram. Yira means he appeared to him that, that to be his location. He says, after this Vayira, you'll never find the word Vayira ever. No, Hashem no longer appears to Avram. It says, Hashem speaks to Avram, meaning God is always with Avram. It's like two people, Lahavdu, husband and wife, they sit in a room, they sit, they speak whenever they choose to speak to one another. But they're always within each other's proximity. The Shekhinah is always with Avram. That's, his lo- that's God's location in this world. So from now, going forward, it's always, Vayom Hashem Lavram. Vayadaber Hashem Lavram. There's no longer, Hashem doesn't have to appear. Appear means he's elsewhere, he appears. He's always there. Therefore, it's Vayayayayla. But when is this? This is the third day of his circumcision. This is when he becomes the Merkava. Because he becomes the Merkava, he's the location. Therefore, but when is that? Because only when this, trans, this trans, transition took place, he went from the post-sin to a semi-pre-sin, and this is when he became the Merkava. Rashi cites the Medrash. Why did a God appear in a law named Mamre? So Rashi says, Hun Shunoslo Eitzelamilo. He encouraged him to be circumcised. Therefore, God appeared in his, his portion. Eloni Mamre, the plains of Mamre. So, of course, we look in the Medrash. Avram had to consult with his compatriots. He had three compatriots. On the Eshkel Mamre, they went to war with him. They watched the, 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 their, their, their equipment when they went to war. When he went to war with Eliezer. He asked, if God says, a man who went into the fire came out of the fire. He has to consult. If Hashem says you should circumcise yourself, he has to consult with them whether he should or not. So the Midrash says he wanted to test the metal, so to say. Where do they stand? Who, who are they truly? So he goes to Oner, he says, what do you think? Do you think I should circumcise myself? He says, I don't think it's a good idea. Why? Because you realize you just defeated the four mightiest kings. If you circumcise yourself, you're an older man, you'll be in a vulnerable state, you'll be infirm. They'll come and they'll take revenge against you. They'll attack you, they'll kill you. I don't think it's a good idea. So on air, immediately disqualified himself. Goes to Eshko, what do you think? He says, you know, you're an older person, you're infirm. You, you circumcise yourself, you can bleed to death. I don't think it's a good idea. It, I think it's not being fully responsible, you should not circumcise yourself. Goes to Mamri. Mamri says, what are you talking about? If God took you out of the fiery kiln and God gave you the bill to, to defeat four kings, the mightiest kings in the world, you think something's going to happen to you? Of course, God says, well, of course you should circumcise some. What's the question? So Mamre showed his true colors, his level of faith, which is just rational. So, but it's interesting. What Mamre is saying isn't, just, isn't so obvious. If Hashem took you out of the kiln and Hashem allowed you to defeat the four mightiest kings, do you think you're going to die from circumcision? Do you think you'd be vulnerable to attack? But why do the other people think this way? But you see, something which is so obvious, it's not so obvious. If a person has reason to doubt, something can be obvious, you don't accept it, you don't embrace it. Now we usually see the Chavetz Chaim, sometimes he quotes Psukim from Kohelis from Shira Shirin, and he asks questions. The question's a phenomenal question. You don't even know how to approach it. And the Chavetz Chaim goes to go and he elucidates the, the, the verse. And it's, it's, it's beautiful, and it's a profound message. So he'd say, was the Chavetz Chaim such a genius that he saw exactly how to understand the Pasuk? Very often, of course he was. He had a photographic memory, he was a genius, he had retention, one of a kind, no question. But the Chavetz Chaim, because of this level of Emun and Bitochum, the way he believed God. When he read the Pesach, that's what the Pesach is saying. Of course, what it is saying, it's, it's, it's an expression of Emun and Bitochum. So if you're coming from that bad vantage point, of course that's what the Pesach is saying. But if you don't, you're not at his level, the questions are questions. The one word doesn't read into the next word. I mean, what Mamre is saying is understood. 
But the person says, you know, the person's a skeptic. Do you, do you know it? Maybe. Maybe it won't repeat itself. I don't know. Okay. It's totally being irrational. But if you understand what it is, it's not that whole rash, that's realistic. Whoever heard of such things? Coming out of a fiery kiln? But you realize your brother didn't come out of the fiery kiln. You, you beat them this time, but you know you can beat them next time. What? It's unheard of. Therefore, because Mamre had that level of faith and encouraged it, not that Avram Chassoshon needed encouragement. You have Moshe Rabbeinu. Koran or Pornov. He radiated holiness. He received the Torah at Sinai. God openly communicated with him. And you have a Dosan Aviram. Could you imagine? Until the very end, he defied him. They defied Moshe Rabbeinu. They said, you have to gouge your eyes out to get us to, to, to come to you. I mean, a person could have a block. When we say that seeing something correctly needs a special siyate dishmaya, needs a siyate dishmaya. Otherwise, you don't have the siyate dishmaya. You don't see it clearly. This is the first of Idrish Tantruba, this week's parsha, this week's reading. The Medjish starts, Every day we say 18 brachos. Shmon Esrei. Damido. Oloma Shmon Esrei. Why 18 brachos? What does the number 18 correspond to? Omer of Shmuel Bar Nachman. Keneged Shmon Esrei. Pomim Sheovos Ksub Matura. Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov are mentioned 18 times in the Torah. Harishan Shebehem, the first time, and they all are mentioned together. It's not Avram and Yitzchok, it's Avram and Yitzchok and Yaakov. Ve'lakim pokod yivchod eschem. Yosef says to his brothers, Hashem will remember you. Ve'helo eschem in oretz azos, elo oretz, ashe nishba l'avram, l'yitzchok, uli Yaakov. That's the first time. The closing one is, Ve'yom Hashem elo zos oretz, ashe nishbati l'avram, l'yitzchok, uli Yaakov. This Moshe made speaking before he passes on. This is the land which Hashem says, I've given, I've promised to Avram Yitzchok Yaakov. And if somebody should ask, this 19, that Hashem spoke to Yaakov on Haram Maria, and where Hashem introduced himself by saying, Elokei, Avram, Avicha, Elokei, Yitzchok, Oretz, Ator, Shochim, Oleo, you respond, but Yaakov is not mentioned there. He's speaking to Yaakov, but it's mentioned 18 times. What's the significance of 18 times that they're mentioned? What is Amida? The Gemara says, you have the only to God. A Jew has the right, it's, it's privileged that whenever you want to speak to Hashem, you have an audience. Whoever heard to go before the king of kings, Melch, Malch, and have an audience. Who, who are you? You understand? The Mishnah tells us, in Shabbos, a Jew is, is, is a Ben Melech. You're a prince. You're God's children. Well, a, a son, a child can't go to a father when he cho if he chooses to go to the father. But why are we God's children? Why? B'schus, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. It's in their merit. So because they're mentioned 18 times in the Torah, together, in unison, therefore, it's 18, that's why, in, it's their schus that we can stand before God. That's the reason. Rabbi Yochanan says, so what are they? If they are the Merkava, then the Merkava, that means the Shekhinah was with them. So the 18 times in it, the Shekhinah is with them. So this is literally, God doesn't have to appear to you. You just step into his presence, you're there. He doesn't have to appear to you, you go to him. But how do you get through the front door? The answer is, Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov. That's how we get through the front door. That's the pass through. That's how we get through. Rabbi Yochanan says, Keneged Shmon Osset Sivuyim Sheb Mishkan. We find Ben Mishkan, the Torah repeats, Kashet Siva Hashem is Moshe 18 times. As Hashem commanded Moshe 18 times. So what is the Mishkan? Mishkan is the location of the Shechina. Same idea. Right? The Shechina. Vosli Migish Vishachati Besochon. Vishachati Besochon. That's the Mishkan. So 
what, how many times do you need to have relevance that today that we no longer have to be sending dush? That we should be able to stand to have relevance to the Shekhinah. It's 18. Kashi Tziv Hashem is Moshe. The Midrash tells us that if a person is not worthy to be answered with his tefillah, well, he's not worthy of chesed. That Hashem should do chesed. He doesn't have the, the worthiness. If a person prays and he beseeches and supplicates God strongly, marbe, he begs, as it says, stated in the Gemara, said in Shofnar, the person that has to come before God, like a beggar come with his hat in his hand. That's how you have to stand, like you're a needy person. And the osa chesed imo, even though he's unworthy, but if he comes and he, he's marbe betachnunim, God says, I will do chesed. What, what, how do we know this? Quotes the Apostle Gentilin. It says, Bo kol orchas Hashem chesed vemes. Emes means truth. If you deserve it, you have it. But chesed precedes emes. Higdamni chesed lemes. I state my chesed precedes my emes. And there's not, it says, V'tzedek lebishpot. And righteousness precedes judgment. Shenema tzedek lebishpot. Tzedek. And how do we know this? That everything is predicated first on chesed. Omer ab samloi, tedesh kol drochab chesed. How do we know all the ways of Hashem are chesed? Shere betchila sator kishet es hakalo. Creates chabo. Brings chabo to Odom. So by even Hashem is atzelo, he builds the, the side of Odom into a woman. Then it says, Ubsofo, it closes with Chesed, Hashem bearing Moshe Rabbeinu. That's Chesed, Chesed Shalemis. Ube so Chesed, in the middle of Chesed. Bikr es Hashem comes and pays a sick visit to Avram Avinu. Kevot Shemom Avram, when Avram circumcised himself, Vahu Palma, you show Bikro. He, with his whole heavenly retinue, came to pay the sick visit. So the Torah reveals this to tell us that Hashem's chesed is what precedes his judgment. Yoshi Pesok Homayom. Avrobi Vido was sitting at the entrance of the tent, Kahomayom, at the hottest part of the day. So Rashi cites the Chazal that Hotzea Kurdish Brochu Kham Minatiko. God unsheathed the sun. Why? Shalachrich Borchim, and shouldn't be bothered with wayfarers, with guests. Well the fish are all mitstayer shlohoy orchim boyim. When he saw that he was pained that the Orchim weren't coming, Hevi Malochim Olov B'dmus HaNoshim. He brought angels in the form of human beings which he wasn't aware of. Now, what about if he would have said, thank God I could take a break. I don't have the strength for it. Hashem wouldn't have sent Malochim. He wouldn't, wouldn't have sent wayfarers. But he sent the wayfarers. Why? Because he's with Steyer. Avram was pained that he couldn't be involved in hospitality. Mm. Now, why did Avram want, why was he pained? That he couldn't be involved in hospitality? What was Avram's objective with this hospitality? We quoted a posuk last week, the Midrash, from Shir Ashirim, that the Midrash says, Ochos Lono Katano. We have a young sister, Ochos, Achos. The word Icho means to mend. You have a tear, he was able to mend. There was no tear, there was no question in theology that Avram couldn't deal with. He could pend with the most difficult question. And he could respond and refute every level of paganism. This is Avram Avinu. So, what was Avram Avinu's mission? To undo paganism and to espouse monotheism throughout the world. Mm -hmm. That who is the Odom? Who is the master? Hashem is the master. 
what happens is, so any moment that the wayfarers don't come, that means the pagans continue. The paganistic beliefs by those people, they remain with those false beliefs. The Chil Hashem continues. He was pained with that Chil Hashem knowing every moment there's another pagan who, re who remains, God's name is being desecrated. Therefore, he was pained. He says, I'm not interested in resting. Not interested. Regardless of what it takes. Mm. Heard on a tape many years ago, Berwein. The Pandemic Chirov once came, Berwein at one time was a rabbi in Florida, Miami Beach. And the Pandemic Chirov, the Pandemic of Rocho, came. It was in the summertime. It was hot, very hot. The Pandemic Chirov was a nerdy man like in his late 70s, maybe his early 80s. And he had to raise money. He was a phenomenal fundraiser. Built part of his yeshiva, was a tremendous disseminator of Torah, and he was one of a kind of personality. He had a charisma, and Rabbi Wine being a rub in the community, a rabbi, he had all kinds of relationships. So he would take the Pondimature around to various individuals, philanthropists. So, the, so they went out in the morning before it really became very hot. And afterwards, Mary Wine was exhausted. So he says to the Pondimich Rav, you know, the afternoon is, is scorching. Even though there's air conditioning or whatever, but still, a man of your age, is not really good for you. You really should rest in the afternoon. We'll go out in the evening again. So he said to him, he says, you know, take an afternoon nap, you rest up. He says, to sleep? He says, I have enough time to sleep in the grave. Right now I'm here. There's no time to waste. I have to fully invest the time. Avram Avinu, 99 years old, you're informed, infirm, it's the most difficult day of recovery, it's the third day. He's pained. You know, it's okay, you can take a break at your age. This, he had a serious, he had serious surgery. Chil Hashem, God's name is being desecrated every second. I should cease for a moment. It's worse than Pikuach Nevesh. It's more important than Pikuach Nevesh. Can't cease. He's pained by it. Shem sends malochim, angels in human form, to satisfy that. Chazal tell us, Lo yitrat nitna Torah el la The Torah was given to those who ingested the man. The man was spiritual food. The Gemara refers to it as lechem abirim. It's the same food that angels are sustained with. Because so angels, when they're sustained, it's in spiritual form. When we were in, in the desert, we want, it was put into physical, material form. But in terms of its essence, what it did, it actually, it nourished our spirituality. It nourished our neshamas. It opened the vistas of spirituality that we're able to process the Torah at, at a very special level. That's Lodi the Torah Ulchem Man. Now, in what merit did we have the man? The Chavot Chaim has a question. Avraham Avinu did Chesed his whole life. When he left Choron, it says he brought Nefesh Osom Choron. He had hospitality. Why did God choose this hospitality more than any of the previous hospitality? Here, every detail of his hospitality, in what manner he did it, to what degree he did it, Hashem evaluates it because you did it yourself. God says, I will provide that myself. Anything you, you actually execute it through an intermediary, it will come through an intermediary. You offer the bread yourself, the man will come directly from heaven. You offer the shade of the tree, the ane the clouds of glory. The water that you delegated it, that will come through an intermediary. Intermediary, therefore Moshe had to strike the rock. Okay? So if Avram wouldn't have been pained because of Chil Hashem, there wouldn't have been angels. So firstly, the Chofetz Chaim says, if a person does an act of chesed, of hospitality, to an ordinary person, it's considered a mitzvah. But because the beneficiary is ordinary, the value of the act doesn't have the same value. What about if you host a person who's God's favorite, because he's such a holy tzaddik, the, although it's the exact same action, the, the intent is the same intent. 
But the value is a different value. Do you know what it means to host a Malach? Meaning all the Chesed Avram had done until then, he was qualified, he was worthy that he should have the ultimate guest. So he should be able to reap the greatest level of reward. But according to what we're saying now, it's even more than that. It's not only what he did before, because he was mitzayir. A God could have said, had some people going out in the heat, who are ordinary people, who are needy. He said, malochim b'tzuras hanoshim, angels in, in human form. Because he wants it, him to maximize. You're mitzayir, you paint for me, because chil Hashem, I send you the best, the best, the best customer. The best one. The beneficiary should be at the most advanced level. So the value of your hospitality should manifest itself at the most unusual level. And what is that? The shade of your tree or the clouds of glory for 40 years, which ultimately manifest themselves in the midst of sukkah, which goes beyond the desert, as we once mentioned in the Midrash. The ekopas lechem, the bread, the morsel of bread, that's the mon. So why were we able to process Torah at that most advanced level? Because we had none. So what was the mon and outgrowth of? That he was paying to his core of Chil Hashem, of Rome. The water, endless amounts of water to sustain millions of people and their livestock. Because he offered, he offered the water. Because he was paying. But he believed that these were, they were Arabs. They were pagans. That's what we told them to wash their feet. Because they were, they were sand worshippers. They should wash that. He didn't want to be tracked into his house for that reason. It says he saw them by Yorex the Grosso. He ran to them. What is, what is that running? And if you would have gone, you know, you're 99, you're recovering. As much as you were paying, take it slow. Walk slowly. He ran. It's like a person's running from fire. He's running. This is the ultimate, this is the ultimate opportunity. Can't hold himself back. It's like you forget about yourself. It's like Lahabdil, the person who was a case, person who ran the marathon. He was so bent on succeeding, he had a broken ankle, he didn't even feel his ankle was broken. Because he was so consumed with the winning. Lahabdil. Avram Avida was so bent on COVID Shemayim, his own, his own personal situation was totally negated. It's like he didn't exist. All that existed was COVID Shemayim. So he ran towards them. But it's interesting. It says he ran from the entrance of the, of the tent and he prostrated himself to the ground. The Torah says he was sitting at the entrance of the tent. It says, it's, it could say, it says, he ran towards them. What does it have to repeat again from Pesach oil? We know he was at the Pesach. He was at the entrance of his tent. So, and he ran. Where is he running from? He's running from the pe Pesach oil. Okay? So the Sephardo explains he could have walked nonchalantly, slowly, and as he got closer, he, he sped up. He ran from the tent, the Torah stuff from, no, from the entrance because he's showing the, the special value. It's not he wanted just to show them how special they are. He actually, he ran from, from, from the entrance of his tent, which showed the value of everything. There wasn't a moment he hesitated. The moment the opportunity presented itself, he ran. I was thinking that, it's not clear, he was sitting at the entrance of the tent. How do we know he's mitzvah? How do we know that he was paying, that he couldn't fulfill the mitzvah of achles Orchim? To use that as the vehicle to espouse monotheism, you know? Because the next pasuk says, when he saw them, it says, "By Yorath, gross and Pesach oil." From where did he run? He ran from. The, so that reveals that the Pesach oil that he was sitting at the hottest point of the day was specifically for this purpose. He could have been sitting just see whatever it is. Wayfarers, where are they? But to what degree that he was mitzayir? How do we know he was mitzayir? From by Yorath, gross and Pesach oil. That goes to qualify. Why was he sitting at the entrance of his tent? He was waiting. He was pained. He couldn't wait till that pain was, was relieved from him. When he saw them, this is the relief.
and just tells us when he ran his dama bin the top tape the blood started to drip he had an open wound could you imagine I mean here the blood is dripping from him you see the level of Mesiris Nefesh, he's giving literally. In the merit of giving your life. In your merit, I will have mercy on your children in regard to two bloods. And I will take retribution against their enemies. In the merit of these, these dripping, dripplings of blood. Erech misposeses mitomoyach. Hashem says to Klal Yisrael in, in Egypt, you should not leave the confines of your homes. Put blood on the doorposts and the lintel. That's what you should do. Why? Because when the attribute of justice is out there, it doesn't discern between Tzadik and Rosh That's how perfect you have to be. In the merit of the blood dripping, I'll have mercy on your children, regarding two bloods, and I will take retribution against their enemies. What happened when we were in the confines of that? Hashem killed the Bechor, and also there was an angel of death. Besides, and as it says, I will pass over you, I will see you wallowing your bloods, in the plural. That's the blood of the Pesach. They were circumcised. Interesting. So why did Hashem have Rachmanus on us? It was the Schus Avram Avinu. Why did he give us these bloods? The blood of Pesach and the Dam Milo. Right? Because there's a question. Hashem saw we were Orob the area. We were naked. We were devoid of mitzvahs. He gave us two mitzvahs. He could have given us other mitzvahs. Right? The answer, other mitzvahs wouldn't have made it. It had to protect us from what? From the, from, the, from the attribute of justice. These two mitzvahs have specifically have relevance to that. Why? Because these, this, these two mitzvahs, the, the dribbling of the blood represents Avram's Mesiris, Nefesh. So it has to be Pesach, it has to be Milo, it has to be specifically that, it has to be the blood, it has to be in sync with what Avram. Only due to that, Ochos al as you did not take your own safety, into account and you're oblivious to it because you negated yourself to such a degree therefore when I give this mitzvah to your children it will protect them and, not, and not when I destroy and take retribution against their enemies they'll be protected that's the Dam Pesach Dam Milo so you say that's enough Vayar Vayar he saw them and he ran you know you could walk even if he walked he would have been dripping blood right he would be dripping blood. What's the running? The ru- running has an added value. In the merit of the three runnings that, because the Pesach says he ran three times. I will run three times before your children at the time of the giving of Torah. Where do we find Abram the Mechim? He ran three times. When he first saw them, he ran towards them. Then it says, He ran to the calves, the slaughter of the calves. And he prepared it quickly. How was he, how were we paid for this? And then it continues. So every aspect of our being established as a Claudius soil, from the time of the Gula till Kabul Satora. This all has to do with the merit of Avraham Avinu. This is how important that circumcision was. Now it's interesting. It says he runs to them, he bows to them. 
and he refers to them according to one term, uh, when he says Avni means masters, he's referring to not to, to the Shechina. He says, by favor of yours, do not pass from the presence of your servant. And he, he pleads with them to accept this hospitality. Take the water, take some bread, satisfy yourselves. And he's rushing and running. He had, he had endless servants. What is, what is he doing to himself? What's the reason? I mean, according to what we're saying, you'd say there's a question, were they like princes? What did they look like? Were they like lowly Arabs? Let's say they're lowly Arabs. Doesn't make a difference. What's the objective? The objective is you have pagans believing the world is owned and controlled by the deities. Could you imagine? The Gemara says in, uh, in Brachos that if you stop praising Hashem, right? Who's able to utter all the praise of God to be make known all his praiseworthy? You can't. So if you start, you can't stop. What, so versus what is it analogous to? A person's worth a million gold coins. You know what he's worth? He's worth twenty billion dollars. You know what he's worth? Three hundred million dollars. It's an insult. Maybe a lot of money, but if you're worth thirty billion, three hundred million, but well, it's nothing. Understand? It's nothing. He's a lowly Arab. It's not the Arab. It's the Chil Hashem. It's not the, the person. But any, whoever he may be, if he's a pagan, who is who? The affront is to who? It's not Kodesh Baruch Hu. Therefore you do. I prostrate myself. Whatever it takes to make a difference in this man, in his belief, that's what I do. Doesn't make a difference. You say, Why? A man of his wealth, a man of his stature, a man of whatever it is. He has slaves. Can't leave it to a slave. He has to be involved every step of the way. I used to ask the question years ago, you know, when Bush was president, Bush Jr., and you go to the White House, and he says, uh, first thing you come in, he prostrates himself before you. And then he tells his wife to bake the bread if she, if she is qualified to bake bread. Let's see, she is. Is that, is that what his wife? You have endless chefs and bakers and everything else. Avram had endless. What's it all about? When you go see Bush, you want Bush doesn't want anything you want from Bush. You understand? He doesn't prostrate himself. He's the President of the United States. Now you have to appreciate who he is. Avraham Avinu was relevant. To, he wants you to appreciate who he is. You have to understand the message. That's all. That's it's not important who he is. It's important who you are. That's the, what's important. Therefore, there's, 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 there's no question over here why you're demeaning yourself. It's not a demeaning. This is not. This, this is the most honorable thing I could do. find last week's reading after Avram had defeated the four kings the Melech's Dom comes to him and he was originally taken captive by the four kings he says give me the people you take the spoils Avram says I will not take not a thread not a bootstrap from you you're not going to say you made me wealthy Okay? So the Gemara tells us that because Avram didn't take the people and convert them to monotheism, therefore, Klaus went to Mitzrayim. Therefore, there was, there was, there was Golas Shiva Mitzrayim, according to one opinion. Because here you could have taken them and converted them to bring them to Ashkenazi Ashkina under the wings of the Holy Presence, and you did not. Therefore, your children are going to go into exile, and we became pagans there, and so on and so forth. 
I mean, Avraham Avinu's whole life was, was, was bringing people to monotheism. And somehow over there, he had a blind spot. We find that anything which Avram did himself, God did himself. It didn't happen through an intermediary. He offered the shade of his tree, he offered the bread. The month fell by itself, came naturally, and the what? The Anne covered. Clouds of glory came naturally. The water had to be extract, extracted from the stone. Because he he offered it through an intermediary. Say the same question. Avroma Vino. He's so involved in hospitality. He's prostrating himself before these people. He's doing so much. He's negated himself. You mean you can't offer the water? Why can't you offer the water? But he didn't offer the water. And maybe that's why the whole chet of the, of the Meimu Riva came because Avram had, Moshe Rabbein had to strike the stone. If the water would have come by itself, he would not have had to strike any stone. He would have been mispalel, and the water would have, would have flowed. Right? It's only he struck, Hashem says, speak to the stone, according to Rashi, and it, rather than speak, he struck the stone. But if he didn't have to be involved in the whole process, it would have started to rain, or the wellspring would have just ch- churned out the water by itself. So why? Avraham Avinu, his whole life, he fought against paganism. What did paganism represent in Avraham Avinu's lexicon? Something that was so vile, something that was so putrid, something that was so, so abominable, it's something he could not tolerate. He didn't want to have any association with it to any degree. He despised it, he detested it. That's what Avraham Avinu's relationship with idolatry. So he, they come, and they have dust on their feet. They may be sand worshippers. They subtract. He doesn't want to, even to give them water to wash their feet. He says, you know, out back, go wash your feet off. He didn't want, that's how he despised it, he detested it. You understand? Poor Sodom. Stone right away, he's coming with an approach. You offer me, you take the spoils. What is stone? Stone is run with Hatom Lashem they despise God. They sin intentionally. They're defiant. And you, you want to give me. I'm the victor, but the way you're presenting it, you're giving me the spoils. The spoils are right through mine. You're giving me nothing. It doesn't make a difference. But if you're going to use that as a means to say you made me wealthy, Hashem, that I should benefit from the source of evil, once that happens, what is, what is he a representation of? Of evil. That created the blind spot. So they, therefore, he says, "Tell the nefesh, I want nothing to do with you." This is like the idolatrous sand. He wants nothing to do with them. That created the blind spot. Otherwise, it's not understandable. Why didn't he? But he, afterwards, he realized when he had the Brisbane absorim, he realized Hashem told him, "Why do we find that Avram? He entered into dialogue with Hashem so strongly when Hashem says, i 'I'm going to do, destroy Sodom.'" Because if they're destroyed, it's over. As long as they're still alive, you, there's a chance to undo it. We mentioned this in the past. Hashem says, there's no hope. Once they were destroyed, the Klausur was etched in stone, they're going to Egypt. Shib Mitzrayim has to be addressed and can never be ever rehabilitated.